Now it's time to talk about loops. Now what loops are is it allows us to go through data and kind of find what we're looking for by using something else called conditionals. But before we can get there, we want to loop through data. We want to be able to loop through it. And what I mean by that is kind of like if I handed you a grocery item and said, hey, hand me the can of beans. You would grab this grocery bag and go through each item until you found beans. Or you would go through all the items, look at all the items and go, is this beans? Is this beans? Is this beans? Right? So computers are very fast, but they're also very dumb. Remember, we have to tell them the instructions. So what loops do is it helps us identify things that would make our program faster. So in the case of finding beans. Now, if I handed a program a you know, a bag of groceries and said, find me beans, it's going to analyze all of the, all of the things in the grocery. So it's going to loop through everything in there. And then each one, it's going to go, is this beans? Is this beans? Is this beans? But it's going to go very, very fast. And we'll have some sort of condition in there saying that, yes, this is beans. So that's called iteration. So the first item it goes through is called the first iteration. The second item it goes through is called the second iteration or the loop that it goes through. And when I say loop, it means that it's going to go through each item inside of that grocery bag. This is going to make a lot more sense once we actually see it in action. But the point is understanding what it is that a loop is, right? It's, 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 you know, it's like a circle kind of, but it does eventually stop. Um, so that's something else that's very important. So another thing when it comes to finding items, it's kind of like if I told you, if I gave you an Excel spreadsheet, so it has all these items in there and I said, hey, tell me what is on I, uh, row 32, right? In your mind, you know to go through each line or you could go e through each line and say, line one says line one. Is that line 32? No. Line two is line two. Is that 32? No. And then you can go on until you reach line 32, then you go, oh yeah, this is line 32. Now, and th that's not intuitive at all, but that's how a computer works. Uh, a computer has to work that way. As a human, you don't have to work that way. You can skip down to line 32 and know exactly where it is. Uh, but a computer's not exactly, doesn't work exactly like that, but you do, which is nice as a human. But each time it goes through that, so each time it says, hey, is this line one? No, that's an iteration. Hey, is this line two? No, and then and it's so on until it reaches basically it's condition and then it might stop or do whatever you tell it to do. That's the important part of instructions. Um, so let's actually start with the loop that I think is the best known as a for loop. So in order for us to use a for loop, we have to use a list. So a list or a dictionary, but we're going to use a list to keep things simple. Now this is going to allow us to go through things. I mentioned the grocery bag before. So we're going to make a grocery bag. So I'll just say bag equals to some sort of list. And I'm just going to use numbers for now. So I'll say 10 and then some other numbers. It's just a lot easier and faster to write out numbers than it is to write out strings. It's literally the only reason. All right, so we've got this bag, right? And if we get the length of the bag, so len bag, we see that we have seven items. Okay, so what a for loop does is we are going to go through each one of these items in this bag that is a list, right? So item in position zero is 10, item in position one is one, two, three, one, and so on, right? So to use a loop, we can we write out four, so F-O-R, and then some variable. So I'll just say item. I can name whatever variable I want here, but it is a variable. And then we'll say four item in bag. I'm gonna go ahead and print out the item. And up, oh, we get this error saying missing parentheses and call to print. Now, Python 3 versus Python 2 is a little different in our print statements. So let's try that again. And we'll do print and item. So this version will work for all of you. The reason I show you this is only because um, if you watch a lot of our other stuff and you see a print statement, you might see it in this syntax. Um, but this is the appropriate syntax for both languages. You can use it this way. Okay, so what print did was it printed out or it displayed um, this stuff um, on our screen, right? So basically we went through each item in the bag and we displayed it on our screen. That's all it did. That's all we did right here. So this is a loop for item in bag. Notice it went through only the amount of items that are in the bag, it didn't go through extra ones. It only went through 
the seven items that were there. But we can also count if we wanted to, we can count to make sure. So I'll say I equals to zero, and then do four item in bag, and then we'll say I equals to I plus one. So we're saying um, the new value of I, the new value of I right here is equal to the old value of I plus one. And then we'll press enter, and then now we'll print out I. And it says one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So seven items, seven iterations. So that is what iterations are, and that is what a loop is. So loops are really, really cool because I can also say for item in bag, I can say if item is equal to 10, so notice these double equals, we'll come back to conditionals later, but I just wanted to introduce this right now. If item is equal to 10, then we will print out, yeah. Now we loop through, it only prints it once. Why does it only print it once? Because if we look at a list, we only have one item in there, that's 10, right? So the loop went through everything in um, the side of what was the list of bag. It didn't go beyond that. So that's a for loop, really cool, really useful. But there's another loop called a while loop that we're going to talk about now. Now, a while loop is slightly different. A while loop says while some condition equals to true, then do what's inside of that loop. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to say while I'll first off say one i equals to 10. And I'll say while i is less than 11, we're gonna print out, yep. And then while I'm doing that, I'm gonna say i equals to i plus one. Um, so again, the new value of i is equal to the old value of i plus one. So while i is less than 11, I did i is equal to 10, it only printed one time, as it should. So while i is true, we see that. We can also do it a little bit more complicated than that. So let's do i equals to zero, and we'll do while i is less than 1,000, let's print i, and then we'll do i equals to i plus one. Whoa. It just counted out from zero to 999. So let's take a look at this while loop. So it's gonna loop through. So it's going iteration by iteration by iteration by iteration until this condition is no longer valid. And the reason it starts at zero is because we printed i before we added anything to i and we started i at zero. Um, and it's only, and it's definitely gonna stop once I hits a thousand, so it's not gonna actually print out a thousand, um, which is which is pretty cool. So this is something that we'll definitely play around with more. Uh, but this is definitely introducing the concept of conditionals even more so. So we will definitely come back to those. Um, now, the important part here about while loops that you'll get into that you can get into trouble with, that you won't necessarily get into trouble with in for loops is a condition that never ends. So if I said i equals to zero, and I said while i is less than 10, and I print it out um, abc, and press enter a couple times, notice it's not stopping. It's just keep going. It's gonna go and go and go. And I have to use control c to actually stop it. Control c will actually interrupt whatever that program's doing. Um, so I, I'm scrolling up right now, you can't tell in the video, but that, is it's gonna just keep going and going, uh, which is pretty cool about while loops, but also a little dangerous. Now, if I added after that print statement, let's scroll, I'm gonna scroll down back to it. If I added back to this, after this print statement, if I added uh, i equals to plus one or 0 0.001 or something like that, eventually this while loop would stop. Um, so that's kind of cool about loops. We can loop through data, or we can loop depending on some sort of condition, um, which is very useful for us and, and also useful in our software as we go forward. Now, I want to emphasize at this point 
that we are talking about things in the abstract. We're not actually putting them to practical use yet. We will put them into practical use, but I want you to use these videos as a way to reference these concepts in the future if for some reason you're stuck on them. Right, so later when we talk about a while loop or we say, hey, I'm gonna go ahead and do a while loop, you're gonna to wanna to maybe come back to these to get a refresher on how a while loop works or how a for loop works. That's mainly the point here. It's not so much to cover everything about these loops. With that being said, this is the end of talking about loops in general. Um, what we now need to talk about is conditionals. We talked about them a little bit through these loops, but we wanna talk about them on a whole nother level. So if you have any questions on this day, let us know. Otherwise, thanks for watching and we will see you tomorrow.